ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the South Charleston High School ROTC posts the colors and the George Washington High School marching band plays the national anthem. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium the mayor of South Charleston, West Virginia, Mr. Frank Mullins. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out on this beautiful day in South Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> so I want to I share something with you real quick. And, and first of all, Mitch, we can finally do it, right? We, we can, Mr. Secretary, we can officially welcome Green Power to the city of South Charleston, West Virginia today. I, I, uh, I just want to share something with you real quick. You know, this was about, this month, about a year ago, was when, was when Brendan and, and Mark came to my office, I believe, and, and they wanted to introduce me to Green Power Motor Company, made a presentation, we took a ride on one of the buses and talked about their interest in West Virginia. And, you know, why they wanted to come here. They were looking at a couple sites. And then shortly after that time, they, they let me know that this was the site that they had chosen. And so we, we immediately get all the players together and start, you know, doing the negotiations to try to get the deal done. And it was a, it was a roller coaster ride. And that, that's, that's for sure. You know, you had the owner of this property, you had a tenant here we had to deal with, we had the city involved and the state involved. We all had our own legal teams, and I don't think I've ever seen so many red line changes in my life in a deal. <laughs> But, but, we, but we finally got it done. And the reason I'm saying that, I wanted to make that point, is this, this, this got completely got across the finish line because city, county, and state government worked together as a team, as a unit. And that's why it got done. And, and that's, that's something I'm really proud of. And I think everybody was involved with elected officials, appointed officials, or staff members. My staff, I see some of our council members out there, like the song says, my staff and my council members, you know, they were simply the best. Simply the best. And so I'm proud of them for that. So thanks to everybody that was involved. And Governor, I, I want to say to you, from, from, one, from one coach to another, you've put together a heck of a team. And I've enjoyed working with you. But thank you, thank you very much for all you've done for us. We appreciate you so much. Okay, with that being said, I'd like to introduce the president of the Green Power Motor Company, Mr. Brennan Riley. Brennan? Good morning. Uh, I'd actually first like to welcome the new Green Power staff to Green Power Motor Company. Please welcome. Yeah, we're very pleased and excited to have you. And thank you, Mayor Mullins. Uh, without you, uh, we would never even have gotten this far. Thank you so much for all the support and help. You know, folks, the real thanks and the real welcoming nature of West Virginia uh, is, I mean, this, this state is really amazing. And 
it's really embodied by the governor, Governor Jim Justice. I really want to thank the governor and his staff for all the support they've given Green Power. We are incredibly excited to be here and know that with the support that he's given, the support the staff has given, and the love and attention the good people of West Virginia have given Green Power, we're going to be very, very successful and very happy here. Uh, at this moment, I would like to uh, welcome Governor Jim Justice. Well, thanks, Brendan, and uh, let me just tell you this. I'm going to have to leave and not very long here and everything. I've got a really, really close friend of our family and everything that passed away, and uh, his funeral was in just a little while, and, you know, it's just uh, unfortunate in so many ways because I want to be here with you every split second. That's all there is to it, but I've got to go. But with all that being said, let me just go back and let me just say just this. Green Power was an idea that came to us and a possibility. You know, the mayor's right. The mayor's right in saying that the staff around me that I've put together are the best of the best. And, they have, and they're everywhere here. Not only is the staff, all of you, all of you, all of you, all this great band, and all of you. You make West Virginia shine every day, don't you? I'm not going to stand here and sound like a politician to any of you. You absolutely have become the diamond in the rough that everybody missed. We're diversifying our economy, but yet we're not forgetting. We're not forgetting our coal miners, our gas workers, all the great people all across this state that do all kinds of greatness everywhere. But our economy is being diversified, and that's wonderful. We embrace and we go forward. They gave me the opportunity to drive this wonderful, wonderful bus. And I wanted to take it for a spin and go around y'all and go out there somewhere and turn around and come back. Brendan wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> but I mean this when I tell you I'm really proud. I am really, really proud of just the fact that now an incredible company is coming right here, right here in our back door, and bringing hundreds of jobs, hundreds of great opportunities to West Virginia in every way. I don't know how I can see better than that. And so really and truly, say a big prayer for a great, great, great man that lived to be 97 years old. His name is L.D. Gordon, and that's where I'm going. And so with all that being said, God bless each and every one of you. I got to run. Thank y'all so much in every way. Thank you guys. Folks, with, uh, with the governor departing, um, I would like to thank all of you, again, all of you for being here today. It's really a distinct pleasure. I see our folks from Bridge Valley and other our new dealers here. We've got folks from all walks of uh, West Virginia life, uh, Joe Pacifico and the staff that helped us find this location. I'd like to, again, thank all of you for all the support. Recently signed into law was the Infrastructure Investment Act, which is now the Infrastructure Investment Law. It's proposed $2 billion for clean school buses, clean school transportation. And it's being administered by the EPA. Uh, today, we really have the pleasure of having a member of the EPA, uh, the Chief of Staff, UTEC, is here and I would like to invite him up to say some words. Mr. Utek. Thank you, 
with that introduction, Brendan, and good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to be here to celebrate the grand opening of this new power motor company facility right here in South Charleston. And I'm, I'm glad to be here representing the Biden administration and EPA Administrator Michael Regan. Uh, and I'm certainly glad to share the stage with Governor Justice, leadership of the legislature, Mayor Mullins, and many other state and local leaders. It's a great day for the community and the jobs that this facility is going to bring. And it's a great day for all the kids in the communities that are going to be served by the buses that this thing is going to produce. So we know that every day millions of children depend on the familiar yellow school bus to get to and from school. And that's just part of every day for everyday school life for most kids. And over the years, the diesel buses have gotten cleaner, have gotten safer. But even with that progress, there's still harmful pollution that's in the exhaust. It's not good for the kids who ride the bus, the drivers, the people in the community. And by moving to electric buses, we can eliminate all of that pollution. We can take it down to zero, literally to zero. So that's the future. And I think it's really just a question of how quickly we can get there. Now, Brandon met, met, mentioned the bipartisan infrastructure law that Congress passed late last fall. And EPA has the privilege of, of running that program. And we're gonna use that to jumpstart and accelerate that transition to zero emission buses. We've actually got $5 billion in total that we can put to clean school buses over the next five years. And that's just an unprecedented level of investment in this technology and in jobs in this area. So early this year, we set up a rebate program to get the first $500 million of that $5 million out the door. Um, we worked hard in the last three months to get applications from all over the country. The response has been even better than we had hoped for. We got applications from every state, totaling well over that $500 million mark. And we're gonna make the first awards this fall. So we're excited about that, but that's really just the start. That's just round one of the funding. We're going to have a, another uh, opportunity for grants, uh, for people to send in applications this fall. And over the next four years, we're going to have more rounds of funding. And the bottom line is this. Over the next five years, we're going to help deliver thousands and thousands of electric school buses nationwide. And many of those buses are going to roll off the line right here at Green Power Market. So it's going to mean cleaner air for kids. It's going to mean cost savings for school districts on fuel, on maintenance of the vehicles. And it's going to mean good paying American manufacturing jobs. Hundreds right here, thousands more in the country. But of course, EPA isn't in this alone. The mayor talked about the partnership that made this possible. And we have great partners in industry with companies like Green Power. We have bipartisan support from Congress. We've got support of state and local officials here and around the country including our partners here, the DEP in West Virginia is a close ally of the EPA. And we're, of course, we're working with school districts in every state. And we're committed to working with everyone with an interest in this program to make sure that we can all make the most of this incredible opportunity. So, as you can tell, I'm a fan of this program. Um, but the infrastructure law, it does so much more. Bridges, roads, water infrastructure. And on top of that, Congress recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act and the President signed it two weeks ago today. And this historic bill will invest in clean energy, cutting bills for families, boosting manufacturing for years to come, all while cutting climate pollution. So I think we've got a lot to work on together. I'm thrilled to be here today, and now I'm gonna introduce West Virginia's Deputy State's Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Sarah Stankis. Thank you. Greetings, Governor Justice, um, members of the state legislators, local leader, leaders, agency partners, and distinguished guests. I am excited to be here today on behalf of State Superintendent of Schools, David Roach, the State Board of Education, President Paul Hardesty, and members of our State Board of Education. Today represents what happens when we all pull together with our collective efforts and energy for a common goal. 
The State Department of Education proudly worked alongside of Governor Justice, House Speaker Hanshaw, Delegate Chris Tony, Senator Carmichael, Acting Secretary Bailey, Senate President Blair, Acting Secretary Atkins, Mayor Mullins, Mark Neslin, Vic Sprouse, State Infrastructure Coordinator, all of these folks together have come together for this common good. You know, it's expected that we have about 220,000 children who will ride school buses this year in West Virginia. And with the inclusion of Green Power's manufacturing muscle in this facility, we will have a zero emission option for our state as well. And that's good news for our, our counties and our children. Those who stand before you today really want the best for our children in West Virginia. And I'm excited that this facility will bring jobs. So students like we have here today, and Superintendent Williams, thanks for bringing such a great um, representation of our students in West Virginia with you today. They're These students will have an option for high-level employment because of what's happening here today. The Green Power Motor Company will be utilized as a true economic driver in Kanawha County and our state. And until just a few days ago, I was serving as superintendent in Upshur County. And I'm an educator at heart and a problem solver in my soul. And like educators across the state, teachers every day are trying to figure out uh, solutions to very challenging problems. And they're asking their students to, the, to do the same so things will work better around us. And today, let us all consider ourselves educators in that vein because we have figured out together how to address important and critical needs. And that's represented here today in this ribbon cutting. So I want to say thank you for your collective efforts. And I'm so great, grateful for Green Power's focus in our region and in this facility. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Secretary. Uh, today, I would like to also welcome someone who's recently had some, some surgery in his life. Craig Blair has been a friend to Green Power since the first day we arrived. Uh, we met him, I met him for the first time at a restaurant here by the river called Lowry's, I believe. And from the first day, he welcomed us with open arms and has been supportive ever since. Uh, Craig is the Senate President and the Lieutenant Governor, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Craig to the podium for some comments. Good morning. How many people are here from West Virginia? Raise your hand if you're from West Virginia. What a beautiful sight. Green Power, welcome. Virginia. We are an all of the above energy state now. That took place this year. I'm proud of it. It took place in less than 30 days. What this is about, and I'm not going to be repetitive. You words have been wonderful, by the way. Wonderful. Uh, I don't want to be repetitive, but what I do want to be able to say is to Green Power, as you come to West Virginia, as you hopefully expand in West Virginia, you're going to see opportunities to be able to come to the legislature, to our government, and actually say, if we do this, we can do a better, it's a better way of doing it. Please, step forward and do that. West Virginia is moving forward into the future, working together, working together as a team, be, trying to be able to change our state for these people, the young people that are sitting out here, our future. You give them a reason. Our number one export right now, and I don't want them to be on one of your buses leaving our state, but our number one export is our youth. We give them a good education, and they're going for gainful employment. Companies like Green Power are changing that. And it's going to be able to give our youth job opportunities. 
and you give them job opportunities, they're going to stay right here in one of the greatest states in the union. There's a, even though it's raining today, and virtually every other state out there right now would love to be having this rain. So we, we've got it made here, but I want them to be able to stay. And there's a reason for that. They make babies. They fall in love and make babies. And that's important. It's important if you want to be able to grow an education system in the state of West Virginia. Right? You're not worried about whether you're consolidating schools or declining student enrollment. I know everybody's laughing, but the math works. Working together as a team makes it happen. You see the team, and the governor has been the leader of that team. We all work together each and every day to be able to bring companies like Green Power to the state of West Virginia. I can't wait to be seeing you at Lowry's every other week uh, because you're going to be part of the West Virginia family that all raised their hand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being West Virginia's Green Pirate. Thank you for being in West Virginia and spread the word in California and other places that come to West Virginia. It's the best place to do business there is in America. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for your heartfelt remarks. Folks, another person that I met early in the days coming here is uh, the House Speaker, uh, Roger Hanshaw. Roger, I want to thank you for being so welcoming, for being so supportive. I think I saw you at a restaurant, too, the first few days we were here with Joe Pacifico up on the hill. Maybe Joe can answer that. Was Roger at that restaurant? You think so? Might just be my memory. Well. Roger has not only been supportive of Green Power, Roger understands the school bus industry uh, and his support of all the school districts in the state. He's actually a chemist, I think, by, by training. He used to be a chemist. Uh, he's a scientist. He's a politician. He's truly a Renaissance man. And I'd like to welcome Roger Hanshaw to the stage. Friends, good morning. I very often in this position get the opportunity to follow the Senate President. Sometimes I'm unsure how to do it. <laughs> I, 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 I want to thank Green Power for being here, not just today, but in West Virginia in total. Brenda, thank you very much for your decision to choose West Virginia. And I have found in the, the nearly year now that we've been able to work together to, to make this announcement today a reality. Green Power to not only be a forward-thinking company, not only to be exactly the kind of manufacturing that we want to have here in West Virginia, but to be a very gracious and hospitable group to work with. I did not meet Brendan at a restaurant. I met Brendan on the grounds of the Capitol building. And the reason I know that they're gracious hosts and gracious people and will be gracious employers is that Brendan himself gave me my first tour of one of these vehicles out in the parking lot of the Capitol building. And I was impressed by it then, I'm still impressed by it now, but I was impressed by it then, and after a few minutes in the vehicle, I very anxiously asked him, can we start it and take it for a drive? And he very humbly said, well, Mr. Speaker's been running the entire time. So, while I, while I used to be able to claim scientific credentials, I can't claim them anymore. <laughs> what I can claim, and will very proudly claim, is that West Virginia's economy is one that has transitioned. For, for years now, I've been saying that West Virginia's economy is one in transition, that we are no longer simply about natural resource extraction, that we're no longer simply about utilization of resources and exporting them from West Virginia, but that we are now about the kind of high-tech advanced manufacturing that so many other states around the country would be the envy of, that we in West Virginia are no longer just about outsourcing our materials and outsourcing what we have here, but we're about coming to West Virginia and choosing to manufacture the transportation technology of the future. Green Power Motor Company will do that right here in South Charleston. And as a native West Virginian, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the reality that we are no longer, we are no longer an economy based upon providing materials for others, but we're an economy now based upon providing finished high technology products for the world. And those, those finished high technology products are gonna be made right here in South Charleston, West Virginia by the men and women of <coughs> 
the men and women of Green Power. You know, we're, we're joined today by guests from the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Chief of Staff UTEC, Regional Administrator Ortiz are here, and I'm very happy about that because we are we are we want to be very clear to all who will listen to us that we are about we are about utilizing our resources responsibly here in West Virginia. We are about making sure that we are doing economic development in a responsible way. And that's represented no better in West Virginia, anywhere and by anyone than Green Power Motor Company. We will soon see products roll out of South Charleston, West Virginia that meet not only our economic development goals here as a state, but also our larger shared priorities as a country on environmentally responsible manufacturing as a country. I'm excited about that. Green Power Motor Company, all the men and women who are now working for Green Power and that will be working for Green Power in the future represent exactly the kind of forward progress that we want to see here in our state. And days like today make me even prouder than usual to be a West Virginian. I am joined today by, by a number of colleagues. Delegate Scaff from here in South Charleston is with me today. Doug and I share the priority of economic development in West Virginia. If you, if you, if you ask me what gets me excited about serving in the legislature, why I choose to devote time and energy to that pursuit, it's days like today. I won't speak for Doug, but I bet if you ask him, he'd say something similar. I'm also joined on stage today by one of our colleagues, Delegate Chris Tony, and Chris's familiarity with the transport with the school bus transportation industry exceeds that of certainly anyone in the legislature and arguably many people here. Chris is a licensed school bus operator by training. He operates a school bus every single day and recognizes that we are transitioning how we do transportation, not just in West Virginia, but in America. Chris is an excellent advocate, not just for his district in Raleigh County, but for the citizens of West Virginia, for the children of West Virginia, and for our state as a whole. Please welcome Delegate Chris Tony. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a wonderful day to be here. You know, we heard about uh, trying to get Green Power in January was presented to us, and now it's an opportunity to hear having the ribbon cutting. It's a wonderful opportunity for our state, bringing jobs here, bringing school buses. You know, as a school bus operator in Raleigh County, in my county alone, last year we traveled over one million miles for traveling students to and from school, getting sporting events and then curricular activities. You know, as a bus operator, if you remember when you rode a bus, it's hard to hear up front when you've got the motor running and everything going on. And if I hear somebody in the back, if they can get my attention, most of the time I have to turn, turn everything off so I can hear them. That bus, when we drove, and I had, actually had the legislators with us when we was riding around, I could hear the conversation in the back. Sometimes it's not a good idea, but I could hear it. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us bus operators. It helps us to be able to hear, have this facility here. You know, if we're going, when we have the opportunity to purchase these vehicles, my county alone has submitted to be one of the, to be one of the individuals to receive the buses. I hope other counties have done that. I hope, I hope all of us have. I don't know exactly how many counties submitted, but I hope we all did. We're looking forward to receiving those. And, and one of the perks for us is having the facility here. So when we buy the vehicle, we know where to come if we need assistance. We know what, what to happen. We know that we have the individuals here with us, working with us. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us to you know, jobs to this state. We want our counties to you know, buy our school buses, make sure that we buy American made. Now we want you to buy West Virginia made. So these buses are made here. In the legislature, we passed a, an incentive for counties that if you bought an electric vehicle, you get an extra percentage on your allowance. And if you buy a vehicle that's made in the state of West Virginia, you'll get an additional on top of that. So we want to give you incentive to buy these vehicles that are made here in West Virginia because our employees are from the state. They work here. They make the vehicles. They work here in South Charleston. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make this company grow, to have these buses on the routes for years to come. Thank you all very much. Chris, thank you. You know, it's interesting uh, when Mark Neslin, Mark Neslin over here with Green Power, uh, standing in the corner with the green tie. Uh, Mark, uh, please raise your hand so everyone can see you. Uh, let's all give Mark a round of applause. For you. Over here sitting in the front row, I have Amber Parrish and Mike Macias, two Green Power employees uh, from California that are out here helping us out. Thank you for setting this up. Mike, thank you for giving me a ride from the airport last night. By the way, that airport was Cincinnati, so it was a little bit of a drive. Thank you. You know, it's interesting, folks. The, 
the real pleasure you have in producing a product uh, that's environmentally conscious and provides a service uh, in transporting folks from here to there or goods from here to there is incredible. But there's also something to be said about having a vehicle built by people that know their kids are going to be riding on that vehicle. So there's some amazing local pride and uh, attention to detail and really additional quality that goes into a vehicle when the crew assembling, building these vehicles knows that their own children will most likely be riding in the vehicle. It does add a little personal touch and does uh, help out in the vehicle manufacture. Now, uh, Delegate Tony here uh, was is a very humble man and is an amazing driver of school buses along with being a delegate in the, in the state. When Mark Neslin approached me and he goes, you know, there's, there's a delegate here who um, who is a big fan of school buses. And so I'm like, Mark, how, what does he, has he been in school buses a lot? Has he recently graduated from high school? Well, like, how is he uh, into school? He's like, no, he's a full-time driver. He drives school buses. And it really was a pleasure meeting you and discussing with you. Uh, we learned a lot and are excited to have him on uh, the support of, of Delegate Tony for Green Power. Interestingly enough, <clears throat> When I first got here to West Virginia, uh, my initial exposure to West Virginia was when I was a kid. Uh, we moved to Maryland, and my dad took us for trips all around the area. My next door neighbor, Chuck Good, was from West Virginia. And uh, at weddings, he would always give, or events, he would always give this weird glass decanter. And uh, he'd say, this is the Blanco glass for, for you folks. It's a tradition in West Virginia to give this as a, as a gift. Uh, there's things in West Virginia that I've come to get familiar with uh, being here, but there was also a kind of a mystic sense of West Virginia with Chuck Yeager and other things that have come here. This state has a lot, a lot to be proud of. And we are very, very pleased to be here. I know for me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it harkens me back to my youth and living in Maryland and, and coming out here regularly. This is really a beautiful state, and Green Power wants to make sure it stays that way. Today we've got a very important person. Uh, we've got the county commissioner, Ben Salgado. Ben Salgado, <clears throat> people often forget how important county government is and the impact it, <clears throat> it gives to local businesses and communities. For Green Power, we know that partnership isn't just with the state and city, but it's with the county too. <clears throat> Pardon me. That's why on my first trip to South Charleston, I asked to meet with the county commissioner. And Joe Pacifico here brought us to your office and you described how important it was to bring business here and how critical the uh, county and businesses, uh, their working relationship could thrive and help make us more successful together. You understand that Green Power will help with economic development, bringing jobs and clean vehicles to the county. And I really appreciate all the support you've given us so far. Today, I would like to introduce Ben Salgado, thank you. I've been called worse. <laughs> Let me tell you, when, uh, when Joe and, and Brendan came to my office a year ago and they pitched this idea, I was on board from the beginning. I mean, who wouldn't be? Hundreds of new do jobs, uh, hundreds of million dollars in economic impact, and then I said, so when are you going to, when are you targeting opening? Next September. Now, General Tackett, if you heard that pitch, that they'd be opening in 13 months from the concept, you'd think, probably not. And so I immediately called Frank Mullins and I said, Mayor, have you met with these folks yet? He said, absolutely. 
this is going to happen. And the mayor got to work. And the reason we're able to cut the ribbon today, well, there's several, but it's because of the hard work of Mayor Frank Mullins. Mayor? But he also knew where to go. And we also wouldn't be standing here without the strong leadership of our governor, our Senate president, and the Speaker of the House. And this is an, an effort from the state, the county, and the municipality, the city, to create new jobs. Uh, new jobs that, not just for our friends over here. Uh, by the way, the baby comment, on behalf of all GW parents, we're gonna wait, okay? We're waiting. <laughs> This is, this is for opportunities for everyone. And I'm glad to see uh, the Superintendent Williams and the Board President uh, Tracy White here because I hope you brought a checkbook. We're going to make them here. Let's keep some of them here. We've got to buy these things all over the state of West Virginia. You know, we don't want to manufacture and ship everything out. Let's keep some here. So on behalf of the Kanawha County Commission, welcome Green Power. Thank you for investing in West Virginia. Thank you for investing in Kanawha County. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So we arrive in West Virginia, and Mark brings me uh, to the, the big capital, shiny, beautiful, absolutely beautiful building. But this is one of the most beautiful capital compounds I've seen in any state that is really stunning and the first person we meet is Secretary Mitch. Mitch Carmichael not only set up meetings with Mike Graney, who was here but looks like he left, and other members of the staff, but gave us an amazing feeling of welcome, uh, was here to help, set up meetings with just about everybody he could, organize for us to meet governor staff, uh, really just an amazing ally to Green Power. Mitch came out to Green Power on a red-eye flight and went home on a red-eye flight to bring Green Power to West Virginia. That, to me, was such commitment. It was uh, something you don't see very often. And I'll tell you, there's, I can't imagine anybody from the great state of California or New York flying out on a red-eye flight to bring a company to their state. This is really a testament to Mitch and the medal of the people of the great state of West Virginia. Mitch, I would like to have you come up here and give a few words, but thank you again for all your support. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you and welcome Green Power to South Charleston and to West Virginia. Uh, it's really interesting and uh, they, as we went to approach Green Power to come to West Virginia, this is what, we need to step back and think what Green Power does. They're one of the only manufacturers in the world of a purpose-built school bus, electric school bus, purpose-built to be electric powered, as well as some of the other smaller um, units that they build. They could have located this facility anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. And they chose, and the people in this room right here today are welcoming Green Power Motor Company to West Virginia. Could have been anywhere in the world. And you know, it's been uh, over 60 years ago, a future president of West Virginia stood on the state capitol steps and said, or a future president of America said, the, the sun may not always shine in West Virginia as we gather during this rainy day, but the people always do. And that's what you will find, Green Power Motor Company in West Virginia. You will find that the people always shine. The people that work in this factory and produce these vehicles and supply the world with green electric powered school buses, safe, dependable, reliable, will be built right here in West Virginia and you will have no better workforce anywhere in the world than here. 
So we welcome you, we thank you, and we celebrate this opportunity to expand the employment in West Virginia and the people that will be working here to do good and to produce great products. And uh, these uh, kids and future kids will be riding in uh, electric powered, safe school buses as a result of your decision to locate in West Virginia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, as you can tell by the bags under my eyes and the lack of sleep that I have, it wasn't just traveling, it's uh, I have a new uh, member of the Riley family. His name is Dominic. Uh, he is today four months and three days old. And uh, although Dominic keeps me up at night, uh, there is nothing more important and more beautiful than having family and making sure that they're taken care of is my chief uh, responsibility in life. We have an amazing group of folks here that are here to really support clean air for children. You know, riding in diesel buses, you would think, well, they've got an exhaust pipe and all that exhaust just goes out in the environment and doesn't really enter the school bus. But the fact is, school buses are very leaky exhaust systems leak, there's all kinds of uh, pollutants that actually end up in the cabin of school buses that burn diesel and other fossil fuels. So Mom's Clean Air Force is not only here to help support the environment, but also the environment in the school bus, which is many, many times more polluted than the environment outside the, the school bus if they're running diesel or other polluting fuels. Today, I would like to invite Lucia Valentine, Mom's Clean Air Force here. I had the pleasure of meeting her in Washington, D.C. Uh, several months ago. Really an amazing voice for clean air and for moms and for children everywhere. Please come to the stage. Lucia Valentine, and I'm the West Virginia organizer for Moms Clean Air Force. So as mentioned, we work to protect children from air pollution and climate change across the nation, and I have the privilege to work in my home state in West Virginia. Uh, growing up in West Virginia, I have long lived with the negative environmental and health impacts of heavy industry on my state. And today, West Virginia is one of the most at-risk states for climate-related flood disasters due to the greenhouse gas emissions that fuel global warming. Uh, growing up on the banks of the Potomac River, I've already seen changing flood patterns in my lifetime um, that put my community at risk. With the transportation sector being the largest source of climate pollution in the U.S., responsible for 29% of all climate pollution, it's imperative that we cut these emissions that are exacerbating the effects of climate change, like flooding, by supporting clean energy growth and investments in the electric vehicle market. Um, I am so proud and excited that Green Power Motors will be manufacturing electric school buses right here in South Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia has also committed to purchasing these vehicles from Green Power uh, produced at the facility. So again, it's going to be great to have these made here and kept here to uh, help our communities across the state. Um, this has been a, a huge opportunity to really protect our public health and grow our economy. It's a win-win for all of us. Um, as mentioned, in May, the EPA launched its 2022 Clean School Bus Program, and this was also a huge step for our nation and those who have been advocating for electric school buses. At Moms Clean Air Force, we've worked to ensure that the funding for electric school buses uh, is allocated to the school districts that need it the most across our state, um, and that we invest in the transition away from dirty diesel buses in communities across West Virginia. But we're excited about the uh, counties that have already applied for this program and are excited to support those that continue to apply in the future when the funding cycle renews here soon. Millions of children still ride diesel-powered school buses across our nation, which exposes them to harmful diesel pollution that can trigger asthma attacks and interfere with their ability to learn. And diesel exhaust is a known human carcinogen. In addition to short-term problems like coughing, headaches, and nausea, breathing these fumes has been shown to damage both the lungs and the heart. And as mentioned, diesel pollution inside the bus is much worse than outside of the bus, which has made children's rides to school all the more toxic uh, for many years. 
But the good news is, again, that e electric school buses will help clean the air that we all breathe and protect our children's health. Um, running on battery power, there are no tailpipe emissions and no dangerous climate pollution. They're also great in rural communities, which we have across our state, um, and where children often have to ride uh, long school bus rides to school. So again, these buses will help um, cut children's exposure to these harmful diesel pollutions. With a plan to manufacture 40 to 50 electric school buses per month by the end of the year, um, Green Power's work to help transition our, nature, our nation to electric school buses will be essential in protecting the health and environment of our children right here in West Virginia. And I wanted to come to a close by thanking um, Senator Manchin for supporting the bipartisan infrastructure law, which included this critical funding for electric school buses, and for also supporting the Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to help implement climate solutions across our state and really uh, ensure a healthy environment and state for future generations to come. Um, so thank you for uh, helping us getting rolling with electric school buses, and thanks for your time today. So today, typically, we would uh, raise the flags. Actually, it looks like we are going to be raising some flags today. The rain has let up enough. Uh, Mark, is that correct? It is. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Well, folks, as I've mentioned several times today, the partnership is a foundation of green power. We are about partnerships. We have a, a new dealer here. We've got uh, local real estate representatives automotive folks, we've got our Bridge Valley folks here. Hello, Dr. Sachs. We've got folks here from all different aspects of West Virginia life, and we're very, very pleased to have you all involved in Green Powers. Uh, I would say our launch here today, of uh, our activities. Green Power could not be more serious about key partners. The state of West Virginia, the county of Kanaw, and the, state of, and the city of South Charleston. To signify this special relationship, we've installed two new flagpoles out there to symbolize our relationship with the state, the United States, and the county. I asked the George Washington High School Band to play the state song. I'd like to thank them and South Charleston High School ROTC for being here today and participating in this event. It's an honor to be part of the community and have our future leaders here for the county schools. Please feel free to check out the beast over here. There's a lot of uh, room for storage of your instruments. I look forward to having you ride on one of our vehicles to your next event. With that being said, we'd like you to are raised and the band has played. I want to thank you all.
I'd like our special guest here to join me in the front of the stage for a ribbon cutting for this fantastic new building that we're so proud to call our home here in South Charleston, West Virginia. If uh, we can stand up front here. Thank you. All right, delegates, if you wouldn't mind standing. All of us are gonna be standing together. There's a couple of big citizens. Whoa, where'd you get those? Sounds like a mess. 